My name is Jana and I'm the Training and Virtual Outreach Coordinator at, for MDRC. And I will be the chat moderator for today. If anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to unmute and just ask your question. Or if you prefer to type in the chat, I'll be reading anything that goes in the chat out loud to make everything as accessible as possible. Um, we have a live captioner. Um, if you go to the bottom of your menu bar, there should be a CC button you can click on to turn on your captions. And uh, we also have an ASL interpreter with us. With that, I will turn this over to Erin to begin the presentation. Okay, thanks for coming, everyone. We really are excited to share this information with you today. Um, the first slide that we have is just our title slide. Again, this is Assistive Technology for Sensory and Learning. So if that's what you want to learn about today, you're in the right spot. And then it's got the <laughs> presenter names. My name is Erin Shannon. I'm the Youth and Community Living AT Specialist. My coworker, Laura Hall, is the Environmental Control and Access AT Specialist. And my coworker, Caitlin Herbin, is the AAC AT Specialist. So. And then we have um, presenter and welcome slides. You can see a picture of myself. I'm smiling at the camera. I have chin length hair that's kind of blonde, kind of brown, depending on the highlights. And I'm wearing a flowered shirt. Laura, do you want to? Sure. Yeah. Um, my photo is of myself. I have um, light brown shoulder length hair. I'm sitting in my wheelchair with a red and black shirt. And there is a, a brick wall in the background. And in my photo, I'm wearing a blue dress and standing with my hands on my hips in front of a pine tree. And I have long brown hair. I am a white woman in her 30s. Um, and today for this meeting, I'm wearing glasses and a tie-dye t-shirt. Okay, so we are just gonna go through quickly what we're gonna cover today. Um, we are going to talk about Michigan Disability Rights Coalition and our assistive technology program. We are going to talk about our lending library and um, talk about how you can take advantage of that. We're going to delve a little into disability and disability pride. And then we're going to start looking at assistive technology. And we're going to be looking at assistive technology for self-regulation and sensory needs and also assistive technology for learning. And then we're gonna wrap it up with some resources that could be of benefit to you. Next slide. We are a pretty informal group. So we are welcome to ask questions during our presentation. You can put them in the chat or also you can come off mute. The picture on this slide is um, a light bulb with the thought bubble around it. A little about MDRC. Our mission is to cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. So we look at things through multiple lenses, not just disability. We look at um, all the other intersections that could intersect with disability and also work to dismantle those. The picture on the side is of our logo. And about our assistive technology program, it's free and it's federally funded. It provides AT related supports around the state. Uh, we provide demonstrations and short-term loans of AT devices, awareness information, training. Uh, we have a, a loan program, and we like to say that we are by people with disabilities, for people with disabilities, and other community members. Uh, the picture on this side is someone talking to a friend through a video screen, um, and the other is a pers uh, person on the other side is um, holding their hands up expression.
we have assistive technology in a lot of different areas. Um, we have AT for community living, low vision, mental health and recovery, neurodiversity, outdoor recreation, gaming, gardening, environmental controls, hearing loss, reading, parenting with a disability, augmentative and alternative communication, uh, cooking and eating, crafting, calendar reminders, connecting with your friends and family and more. So we have a lot of possibilities. Next slide. This is a link to our learning library. It's um, mymdrc.org slash lending dash library. We have more than 1700 devices and we are actively updating the inventory that's listed on our website. So if you don't see what you're looking for, please reach out and ask us because we might not have something in the inventory that we actually have yet. So uh, the picture on this slide is of a young girl and a woman reading a book. And another picture is of a young girl with a lamp over her sleeping. And the third picture is of, what is the name of this? Our companion pet. Potato. Potato. Um, <laughs> this is a robotic pet that allows you to interact with it and kind of um, responds to your movements. It's very cool. It's one of our favorites at MDRC. Next slide. So we're going to go through a few definitions. Um, one, so that we're on, we're all on the same page as to what we're talking about. But we also want to kind of give you the lens and perspective of what, where we're coming from. So we are a cross disability organization, and we support people with both apparent and non apparent disabilities. MDRC believes that disability is more than the mental and physical effects on the body. Disability is how society acts interacts and perceives an individual. It's also how that individual interacts with society and themselves. And as our mission said, we believe that disability is natural and beautiful. Uh, the picture on this slide is of someone using their toes to paint a picture. Next slide. Now, the definition of trauma Trauma is an emotional response to a terrible event. Um, it impacts the brain in the way that it operates. And it can happen at any time in someone's life. It can happen before they experience a disability, while somebody already experiences a disability, or disability can be experienced as a result of the trauma. No matter where it impacts, where it shows up, we have um, tools, including assistive technology, to build resistance in hearing. And the picture on this slide is of a brain-shaped word cloud with words like trauma, fear, anxiety, PTSD, victim, kids, etc. Next slide. Disability pride. To us, disability pride is accepting and honoring our uniqueness and seeing it as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity. It comes from celebrating our own heritage, culture, unique experiences, and contributions. There's a lot to gain from disability pride. It promotes self-esteem and self-acceptance. Um, it provides a support system or a community with a sense of belonging. It can provide access to accommodations. It demonstrates the value of interdependence. So not just working by yourself, but working with others to maintain your independence. It's living a life of honesty and being true to who you are. And it's also expressing an appreciation for diversity. The pictures on this slide are of um, Many people showing their disability pride in protests and holding signs and marching down the street. 
Next slide. So along with disability pride, people can also experience ableism and internalize ableism. Ableism are beliefs that people are the belief that people with disabilities have less value or there's something wrong with disability. And internalized ableism is when a person can turn that inward and start believing all the ableist messages that we get um, as people with disabilities. So it's important to recognize that disability pride is important. Um, it, also, it also takes practice. It helps fight internalized ableism. Again, it provides access to accommodations. It includes assistive technology, which is why we're all here today. Um, it can help reduce shame if, if you experience disability pride. It acknowledges and validates disability and it celebrates uniqueness. The pictures on this slide are of a man sitting in a wheelchair, um, shaking hands with another person who's standing. And the second picture is of three individuals walking and one person in a wheelchair. There is water behind them and they're walking on a bridge. Next slide. Assistive technology. It's any item, piece of equipment, software or app that helps people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. People often ask us, well, isn't technology just helpful for everyone? And that is true. But for people with disabilities, it really opens up possibilities. And um, that's why assistive technology is a bit different than technology in itself. The pictures on the side are of a woman walking with her walker. Of uh, a person, sorry, of a um, door handle knob. Someone holding a smooth rock a rainbow medication reminder system and our logo. Next slide. So when we talk about self-regulation, we are talking about the ability to manage both positive and negative emotions, sensations, and thoughts. It includes being able to regulate strong emotions like frustration, excitement, anger, embarrassment, and fear. It can help calm down if there's something is exciting or upsetting. It's being able to focus on a task. Also refo refocusing your attention on a new task. And it is, it includes the ability to control your impulses. The picture on this slide is some some characters from Inside Out 2. We have sadness, joy, embarrassment, anger, anxiety, envy, and disgust, along with ennui up there on the shoulder. Next slide. So anybody can experience sensory, sensory overload. Um, we hear about it most commonly with people that have PTSD, autism, sensory processing needs, and other neuro develop, neurodevelopmental disabilities. So it can include having anxiety, just having a difficulty in relaxing, experiencing irritability, irritability having strong emotional expression, restlessness, um, physical discomfort or avoidance of the input. And that could be like covering their eyes or desiring to just escape the situation. It can look like stress, fear, or panic, like high levels of excitement or just feeling wound up. And it could be a triggering of the fight, flight, or freeze responses. The picture on this slide is of a person holding their hands to their ears with their eyes closed, like they're trying to shut out the noise. Next slide. 
So there is both sensory avoidance and sensory speaking. Um, we all have a unique sensory profile that includes sensory inputs that help our sensory system regulate and inputs that really cause us to become dysregulated. For example, um, I really like the feel of a nice blanket over me, especially if it has a little weight to it, but I will not eat cottage cheese because of the texture, I just can't. So I have things that, you know, regulate me and cause me to become dysregulated. Um, when you're using assistive technology to support someone, it's important to understand which sensory inputs are enjoyable and which are unpleasant. And the wonderful thing about assistive technology is there's something for everyone. Um, so we can meet the needs of people no matter what their uh, sensory needs are. The picture on the slide is of a someone, a little girl using a walkie-talkie, which um, is a large stick that we have chalk on the end of, and of a girl jumping on a trampoline, on a personal trampoline. So the walkie-talkie could be good for someone who's looking to maybe avoid the feel of chalk. They don't like the feel of chalk. And the trampoline can be good for someone who has sense, needs that whole body movement, that sensory input. Um, jumping on the trampoline can be good. So that is avoidance and sensory seeking. Next slide. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay. Are we seeing any in the chat? No, there's none in the chat that I can see. Just make sure, yep, I don't see any in the chat. Okay. I think we're okay to move on. Well, there was a question from Vic, Vicus. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, anything for learning difficulties? Yes, we are going to get into a little bit in uh, toward the end of this presentation. Okay, he wrote, okay, thanks. Thank you. So AT for sensory needs and self-regulation. Um, before we start reviewing examples of AT for sensory input context, we might wanna mention that um, many pieces of AT can be beneficial for multiple contexts and provide sensory input. We love multi-purpose AT around here. The picture on this slide is of five senses. So there's a brain in the middle with a nose, an eye, an ear, mouth, and hand, and arrows all pointing back to the brain. Next slide. Okay, so here is where we start um, the specific categorizations that we made for our brains about the different categories of AT that we have. Um, this slide is AT for whole body movement. And so that can include any number of things. On this slide, we have um, sensory swings and chairs. Those things can help you sort of know where your body is in space as well as help you get some of your wiggles out if you have that need um, in a safe way. Um, there's also rocking horses, which is on the far right of this slide with a little one working on a rocking horse. And then um, someone utilizing an e-bike actually with our outdoor recreation and gaming and crafting specialists on either side of them. Um, e-bikes are great if you are somebody that wants to utilize a bike, but maybe doesn't have 
the stamina or the core strength, you can adjust the e-bike. So it will either do all the work for you, or you can do some of the work as much as, or as little as you're comfortable with. And then the two swings on the left here, um, the first one has a little one sitting in it inside, um, which is handy. And then the same swing is being utilized outside by an adult. And I think that that is really important to note because um, those swings are portable and you can use them in a variety of settings. And that swing in particular um, holds up to 300 pounds. So just about anybody can use it safely. Um, AT for whole body input. There's all different sorts of AT. And again, before we start talking about the things specific to this slide, I do want to mention, um, Laura mentioned our lending library. We have about 1,800 items. So the things that we're talking about today is just a very, very, very small sampling of things that we have, um, just so that you're aware of that. Um, so for AT for whole body input, we have the crash pad on the bottom here with a little one laying across it. That is great if somebody is sensory seeking in that way, because you can literally crash into it. It's essentially a huge bean bag. So that's handy. Um, next to that, we have the puzzle mats that you can, they interlock and they have different textures and different heights. And so you can really engage gross motor with those needs. We have um, the squeeze machine up above that with somebody utilizing that. And so if somebody needs that whole body pressure to feel safe um, or to calm, they can use that. We also have the Steamroller Deluxe, which is essentially the same thing, but has more pads. Um, there's a body sock that somebody's using up in the corner, that little starfish looking thing um, that can help folks, um, again, to feel safe and to get the weight of that sensory sock on them and calm and provide those sensory input needs. We have um, the stepping stones in the top corner here. Again, you can really engage full gross motor. They're all different heights. Um, the textures are a little bit different. They're very stable, they're very portable. Um, so you can do all sorts of things with those. And then underneath the stepping stone picture, we have a little one utilizing a weighted blanket, which is great, but we do suggest uh, utilizing those only with OT support, just because you need to make sure that the weight is appropriate for the person using it. Um, and then next to that one, we have a picture of a pink nugget. And the nugget is kind of cool because you can basically do whatever you want. You can build the world's greatest fort with it and you can jump and you can climb and you can crawl and do all those things. Um, and you can reconfigure it if you decide you don't like it. Uh, the covers are also washable, which is handy, <laughs> especially if lots of people are using it at any given point. So that's um, full body. There's a question in the chat, Erin. Um, Haley wanted to know how we can find out more information about the lending library and what length of time we can borrow something or how long they can borrow yeah. something. And that she also loves the nugget. Um, the nugget's so really I, cool, yeah. I will put the, Haley, I'll put the lending library link in the in here and then I'll let Erin. Sure, I can answer the question about the length of time. So generally what will happen is somebody will call us and say, I need supports with things for hearing, or I know somebody that needs supports with things for whatever the case may be. Um, and we'll get you hooked up with the appropriate specialist or specialists. Um, depending on the devices that you're interested in trying, um, the loan length time can vary. Typically it's about 30 to 60 days, but if it's something that's quite popular, um, the time can be as little as a week to two weeks. So it really just depends. Um, but typically the loan period time is 30 to 60 days. And then at the end of that time, the specialist that you had been working with will follow up with you, say, did you like it? What worked, what didn't work? 
So if we need to go back to the drawing board and help you figure those things out, we're perfectly willing and happy to do that. Um, if you decide that you really like the items that you tried, uh, we can tell you where to get them. That's one of the things that I really like about our program is that we don't sell anything. So we're not promoting one product over another. We just really want to help folks find the things that are going to work for them. Yeah, oftentimes um, we're bringing in, this is Caitlin, by the way, sorry, everyone. Um, we're bringing in um, a variety of options that are kind of similar, but also have some different features. So you can compare and contrast and find the um, the features that work best for you. And also, I think it's important to note, since it came up, if you decide that something doesn't work for you, that's good information too. Nobody's going to be mad. Nobody's going to be upset. Sometimes people feel bad <laughs> if we've given them some options and none of them work. That's why we're here. We're here to help you find things that work for you. So it's good to know that information too. Any other questions before I move on to this next slide? Okay. Um, assistive technology for touch. Again, we have all kinds of things. You can tell that our companion pets are really popular because um, we have both our dog and our cat version of our companion pets on this slide. Those, uh, again, are great for folks who can't have a pet for whatever reason, be it allergies or apartment complex rules or just lack of finances or lack of space or lack of time, any reason really, but you still want to feel that companion piece. Um, those are really nice um, for folks. There is also, full disclosure, there is a bird. The bird is not my favorite, but again, different <laughs> things for different folks. So if you wanna have your own little Snow White Cinderella moment and wear it on your wrist, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, also on this slide, we have different kinds of slimes and putties and doughs and things like that, because those can be beneficial for folks who are seeking sensory input that way. Um, we have calming tactile strips. So those have different textures on them. The rainbow um, sort of rectangular strips on the slide here are samples of calming strips. There's different textures and some of them are different weights too, right, Caitlin? I think. Um, depending on the textures, some of them are a little bit like thicker in, in feeling than others. And there's also some other um, shapes, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the nice thing about these is um, they're stickers. And so they can be very portable, travel friendly AT. Um, you can put it on the back of a cell phone case or an iPad case. It can go on the a notebook cover inside a pencil box on the underside of somebody's desk or chair. Um, they also make keychains, like flat rectangular keychains that you can stick them on. So you can have a different texture on each side if you like. Um, they're really, really versatile. Um, and um, subtle and travel friendly. So they're a nice option to have. Thanks. And then we just have somebody utilizing a touch screen device also. We also have several different types of AT for touch avoidance. So on the bottom left here, we have a one touch uh, can opener. That's really kind of cool because um, it, first of all, it won't work unless there's a can underneath it. So that's a nice safety feature. Um, additionally, there's a magnet on it. So it will sort of find the top of the lid by itself. So there's not a lot of finagling that needs to be done in terms of getting it on the can correctly. Um, then you just hit the gray button on the top and it will go all the way around the can all by itself. And it will also hang on to the lid once it's done removing it. So you don't even have to worry about potentially cutting yourself on a lid or touching the contents of whatever's in the can that you're trying to open, which can be helpful for folks. Um, next to that, we have two um, pop can openers that look like they might've been 3D printed. Um, 
So again, if you don't like the sensation of touching the metal or if gripping the pop tab is difficult, those can be helpful for that. Um, the se there, second yeah. picture shows uh, the 3D printed opener kind of twisted around and they have a nice um, other feature that you can kind of use it to cover up the opening in the can so that you can keep um, ants and bees at the party and <laughs> you're sitting outside um, out of getting inside of your can. So that's kind of a nice um, uh, bonus feature, if you will, of that little device. The next to those is a um, stylus door lock opener on a keychain, and then above is uh, just somebody utilizing some rubber gloves. It looks like maybe they're washing dishes. So if you're somebody that doesn't like the sensation of water or touching dishes or touching that kind of thing, you can use gloves for that. And then it looks like we just have some different types of chalk holders next to that too. So again, because um, chalk gives a lot of people the ick. So just ways that you can still utilize the things that you want to utilize, but not necessarily have to fully experience it are always helpful. Ooh, this slide is one of my favorites to talk about. This is a slide all about fidgets that you can squish and push. Um, starting in the lower left-hand corner, we have um, a hand holding a pink stress ball. And when you squeeze it, you can uh, see it changes color. There's kind of purple um, foam inside and it's really squishy. Uh, to the right of that is a uh, blue cube shaped um, stress ball. And that's known as the nice cube. And that one is really thick, gooey um, inside. So it takes a lot of deep pressure uh, to manipulate that. So if you really want something extra firm to squeeze on, that's a nice option. Um, it can warm up the more you handle it though. So kind of a little um, pro tip there is if you pop it in the refrigerator, um, or in the freezer to cool it down for just a few minutes. Don't forget about it. We don't want it to be an actual ice cube because <laughs> it would be like a brick. Um, you can get it to be a little firmer and also the cold input um, can be really satisfying too. And so it can kind of um, firm it up a bit for you, which is nice. Uh, to the right of that is a white um, circle, uh, kind of standard shape um, stress ball that has blue flecks in it. This one's really interesting. Folks tend to either love it or hate it. It's called the snowball crunch. It's filled with like a cornstarch center. So when you squish it, it kind of like rubs and grinds and gives you kind of a different input there. Um, some people liken it to like, uh, like nails on a chalkboard kind of feeling though. So that could give you the ick. The nice thing is, is we have a variety of stress balls and they all have different um, inputs and features. So we can definitely find one um, that will work for you. The last one on the right, uh, lower right hand corner there um, is another Neato brand stress ball and that's called their atomic one. So it's like a standard stress ball. And then around it is another um, silicone covering with holes in it. And when you squish it, parts of it pop out of the holes in the cover. Um, and so that can be really satisfying because you get the visual um, color change and also kind of have something to push and pull um, in and out of those openings. Above that, we have some um, poppet fidgets that everybody nowadays, they come in a bunch of colors and shapes and sizes. And um, some of them come on keychains, which is really nice. I even saw a pencil box uh, recently that has those in there. Um, so those can be a nice option if you like to have that feeling of pushing things. It's kind of like the endlessly reusable bubble wrap, um, if you will. Uh, to the left of that, there's this really interesting neon green plastic um, 3D fidget toy. They call it the worm. Um, in our office, it's affectionately known as the breadstick because when you kind of squish it, it becomes kind of like a long oval shape. So one of our colleagues, kiddos, uh, calls it the breadstick and we really like that name. I think it's, um, you know exactly the shape that you're talking about and you can kind of push and pull it back and forth. And then to the left of that, we have some fidget cubes. Um, these are little dice shape or cube shape fidgets that have different inputs on the side. So you can push the buttons or um, click them back and forth and um, kind of um, turn the dials and that sort of thing.
This next slide talks about fidgets that you can bend and stretch or click and clack. Um, and again, like with the others, there are some on here that you might love and some on here that you're like, oh no, do not give me that pop tube, that crinkly loud sound is not for me. Um, but never fear, we've got options that might work for you. Um, starting in the lower left-hand corner, we have a tangle toy, um, which is kind of, uh, they're like individual joints, like macaroni noodle shaped that you kind of all pop together and you can twist and pull it into different shapes, including kind of like a spiral, which can be super satisfying. Uh, to the right of that, we have um, wacky tracks or some people call them a clicky fidget. They're um, like little chain links that kind of bend and snap together. Um, so you can make different shapes with them. Um, it's even fun to connect multiple together and then you can kind of make um, towers with them or even like wear it as a necklace or a bracelet. To the right of that is an infinity cube, which is um, eight cubes connected together by hinges. And so you can sort of endlessly fold and roll um, the cube into the different positions. In the photo, you can see it's like a full square, or we've got um, a big square with the smaller squares on the edges, or you can roll it flat or long ways. To the right of that are some snail fidget toys. These are um, like plastic joints that are kind of popped and linked together, but they can move and wiggle um, as they're connected. Um, some people like to hold them up and um, watch them wiggle and shake, and they've got the different bands of colors that can be interesting visually as well. You can also kind of hold one end in each hand and pedal it like a bicycle. Um, or um, roll it around in your hand. There's lots of fun ways to enjoy them. They are a noisy one though. So if you don't enjoy noise with your fidget, that might not be the right option for you. Above that is the noisiest one of them all. It's the pop tube or the crinkle tube. Those you kind of pull and stretch and they let out a really loud crinkly poppy sound as the tube lengthens. And then you scrunch them back together and there's a whole assortment of sounds as the plastic pops back into place. Uh, to the left of that are um, stretchy strings, or um, one brand is called Monkey Noodle. It's essentially a long, stretchy band um, that can be fun to twist and tie, or some folks might like to spin them around. And to the left of that is a variable of the Monkey Noodle, um, which is a stretchy string that has like a little animal face on one end um, and little animal feet on the other, and they kind of have like fuzzy um, kind of like koosh ball strings on them that can kind of offer different texture input as well. Um, this slide has some of our fidgets that move. Um, there are lots of them out there um, starting kind of right here in the middle. You can see a collection of five fidget spinners. Those are super um, popular for a reason. They're very satisfying um, to hold and spin, or I like to stack them up on top of each other and get them all kind of spinning together or in opposite patterns. Um, they're lightweight and can fit in a pocket, which is really nice. Um, next to that, we have my new favorite fidget toy is the rainbow whirler or twirler. It's a long plastic stick, and on the end of it um, is some like uh, present wrapping type ribbon that's iridescent and it's connected at two different points. So when you spin this stick, it whirls in a circle. Um, a lot of li little kids I've noticed, uh, it reminds them of a bubble. So they go to like blow on it because it looks like iridescent and shiny like a bubble. Um, it's really satisfying to hold upright or upside down or to the side. Um, and it does a neat trick where if you push up on it, it uh, twists up into a smaller circle, which kind of makes it look like a little magic wand or a flower, which is really fun too. To the right of that, you can see the, uh, or the slide has a picture of our um, orange, green, and blue magnetic fidget rings. And those are rings that have um, magnets in the bands and they also twist and spin. So you can um, put one on each finger or you can stack them up in a cylinder and they, and they roll and kind of connect together. Below the magnet rings um, is the lollipopter. Um, this is a new toy we have in our lending library this year um, that is a metal stick with plastic um, kind of leaf shape um, strips on top that make a circle. And when you pull it off its magnetic base, you can twist it in your hands and all of the leaf pieces kind of clack out um, into space. So it looks kind of like a tree shape or a ball shape. And then you can spin it the other way and they all lay flat again. 
Next to that is the Mosey. This is a kinetic fidget toy. It's made out of interlocking uh, metal rings that you can kind of push down and um, it makes like a bracelet you can pop onto your arm. And then as you move your arm, it can um, kind of spin up and down your arm. You can pass it from one hand to the other or pass it to a friend, um, which can be super satisfying. Uh, to the left of that, we have a couple examples of the Ono rollers. These are cylinders, like what you would, um, what would be on a conveyor belt, like at the airport security. Um, so it's two cylinders connected together by a little metal place at either end, and you can roll them between your hands, um, or you can roll it kind of one-handed. Um, the one on the right is made out of stainless steel and it has a really heavy weight to it. Uh, the one on the left is made out of a silicone covering and has bumps on it, so it's kind of textured. Um, sometimes folks might like to roll that on their arm, or if they're sitting at their desk, they can roll it kind of on their lap to give some pressure input that way. Um, they also make them in plastic and aluminum, so they're kind of different um, sizes and weights. Um, and these are really nice because they're easy to slip in a pocket, uh, like a jeans pocket or a backpack pocket, and kind of take on the go with you. Um, I will tell you um, for all the fidgets we've talked about so far, though, those ones tend to be the most expensive um, of the fidgets that we talked about today. There's a comment in here from Erica that says there are a few of us on here who are interested in what type of alternative seating options you have for school systems. We work in the school systems. We have a couple slides ahead, we have a couple different alternative seating options. So we'll get there. Great question. Okay. Um, this next slide has some of our AT with lights um, that um, we have available in our lending library. The um, picture in the lower left-hand corner here with the hex hexagonal tiles though, I'm gonna let Erin talk about because she's done a cool installation with these recently. We have a really cool installation, if I do say so myself, not that I'm biased, um, of these lights. They are, we have 10 of them and they fit together with magnets. And as long as one of the hexagons is connected to another one um, and plugged into the wall, the uh, lights, you can tap them on and off and they're different colors. Um, and so you can arrange them in whatever, uh, way that you would like and works for you. Um, and they're really nice and bright. So people that might need the visual supports are able to see, um, able to interact that way and able to see them in most cases. Um, you can also dim them if the full brightness is too much. And another benefit to those is even though you can tap them to turn them on and off, you can also, if you just sort of hover your hand over them, that will turn them on and off as well. So you don't need to be able to apply any pressure or have your hand um, in the exact appropriate spot in order to uh, be able to interact with that device. Um, and then we just have a few um, things that will project different light patterns onto uh, the walls or the ceiling or wherever you might want them. Um, those can be helpful for some folks for sleeping and relaxation. Uh, next to that, we have a disco ball because who doesn't love a disco ball? It's very bright and colorful and happy. And again, for folks that uh, would like that visual support to be able to interact with AT, that's helpful. And then on the bottom right-hand corner, we have a fiber optic light um that is switch adapted again so folks can interact with it that way and it does change colors too so and then we have at for multi-sense input so um you can make like sensory bins and baskets and buckets and those kind of things um and fill them with any number of things that are on the slide. So sand, kinetic sand, Orbeez, um, some of them are able to be um, utilized with light. You can also use shredded paper or dried beans or corns or lentils in order to make 
sort of DIY sensory bins or kits. Um, but if you do use food, we do encourage you to consider allergies for folks. Um, and then we just have some tubes that have different, um, that are sort of like lava lamps that you can turn over again and again and sort of watch the bubbles in those tubes. And then um, the picture in the top corner is just a light up sand cube table. And then we have AT for bubbles and breathing. So there are adapted bubble wands um, that you can sort of see in the top right corner here where someone is um, utilizing bubbles with a child and the child is chasing after the bubbles. Um, there's also the switch adapted bubble blower, which is um, the dinosaur here at the bottom. Um, the bubbles come out of his mouth so people can interact with it that way. Um, in terms of breathing, there's the breathing ball. That's the brightly colored spherical um, device in the corner. Um, that's helpful if somebody needs to be able to concentrate on their breathing in order to uh, calm down if they're stressed because you pull it out as you inhale and make and then when you exhale, you push it in. So it's a visual support of the breathing process. And then we also have um, calm strips on this slide. Again, Caitlin mentioned the calm strips have different textures. This uh, calm strip square sort of um, illustrates box breathing. So it says inhale, hold, exhale, and hold again. And so you can, people typically will um, hold each segment of that. So you'll inhale for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, exhale, and do it over and over again until um, the person feels calmer. Um, the next thing that we have is AT for clothing. Um, we have all different kinds of things for AT for clothing. So there's magnetic, uh, shoe closures. If somebody has difficulty with fine motor in order to tie their shoes, you can string the laces through the magnetic closure and then um, put them together that way. There's also boots that fully unzip so that you can insert um, a foot or even a foot with a brace on it and then just zip it right back up so it's not as hard as having to um, squeeze a boot on and off in the typical way. There's mittens above that that do the same thing. They have Velcro closure and they fully open so that you can just insert the hand rather than having to fight with getting the elastic all the way through. Um, and then you just close it back up. There is a magnetic closure parka. It also has Velcro closure too, just as an extra added layer. Um, and then there's um, a bundle being down here being utilized by somebody in a wheelchair. And that is a fleece lined, uh, essentially lap cover for somebody who uses a chair or is in a seated position frequently. So they um, can be protected from wind and rain and snow. Not that we ever get snow in Michigan. I know everybody hates to think about that now, but it's coming for us. So we have those things available. Um, we also have a variety of things for uh, day and nighttime incontinence. So there are on this slide a variety of different types of reminder watches um, that you can set for any length of time. Typically, uh, you can go from every 30 minutes to every two hours, and the watches will either vibrate if you're wanting something that's a bit more discreet, or some of them will play music or give you an auditory uh, cue as well, uh, just as a reminder to go use the restroom. Um, there is a moisture sensor. So if somebody is a really heavy sleeper, um, that will alert you to the fact 
that um, there's moisture that needs to be taken care of so that somebody's skin can remain healthy. And then also on this slide, we have a variety of different kinds of um, incontinence, underwear and pajamas. Erin, mm -hmm. what, what was the green device, Ian? What was the what? The green device. Oh, that's the moisture sensor. So oh, okay. um, typically what will happen is you put uh, one part of the sensor on um, the pajamas of the person, and then the other part of the sensor is hooked up underneath the mattress or the bed sheet. And then as soon as the sensor on either the person or the mattress senses moisture, it will vibrate or provide an auditory clue to alert someone to the fact that there's a need for some additional uh, supports there. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to sensory for hearing, AT for sensory for hearing. Um, we have a variety of noise canceling headphones, um, noise reducing headphones. So hearing sensitivity can begin as early as a newborn. There are all different kinds of styles of headphones that fit infants to adults. The infant headphones will wrap around the back of the head and the forehead to protect the soft spot on the baby's head. There are also more comfortable styles like sleep headbands that are soft and wrap around the head if someone doesn't like the heavier over the ear styles um, that are typically a bit bulkier. Um, and then of course we have all of the inner ear options as well. Um, another thing for hearing would be the use of music. So um, you can either use the music to calm you down or get you excited about something or just sort of help you focus. There's really all different kinds of ways you can use music. And then um, the use of like white noise machines um, either during the day or while you're trying to sleep also. Um, there's all different kinds of noises too. You can, there's brown noise and pink noise and green noise. So you just have to find the type of input that's right for you. And some people like like rainforest sounds or nature sounds, and some people like city sounds. And so there's all different kinds of options there. Um, and then we have AT for music. So there's uh, singing toys that could be switch adapted or not, depends on the needs. Um, and then again, the use of playlists for various things. Um, some people have certain things that they listen to if they're trying to, um, uh, up their energy for something again, and things that if they're using to calm themselves down, um, panning audio is useful for people, um, because the audio will go from one ear to the other. And some people say that's very, very calming to them. One of my coworkers describes it as her brain being flossed. And she says that feels very good to her. So she uses it for that. Um, again, music can be helpful in terms of rhythms and repetitive movements and drums are useful for that. And electronic drum pads like are in the picture. And then we also have um, a switch adapted elephant that sings and flaps its ears and that kind of thing. Um, and then vibrations or shaking can be helpful for some folks. So you have ideas like maracas or shaker jars or tambourines or those sorts of things. Um, and then AT for sleeping. There are all different kinds of sleep sacks that you can see the little one in the corner here is utilizing. Um, body pillows, some folks really enjoy, some folks really don't, but again, that's where we try to have a little bit of something for everybody. Um, night lights and also wake up lights um, to sort of cue you when it's time to sleep or when it's time to wake up and help you with that process. Um, the light projectors like we saw on the previous slide can also be helpful. 
sound machines and smart speakers, because again, you can set alarms um, and set routines for when you want those sounds to come on and what sounds you want to come on at a certain time, or if you want the radio to start playing to wake you up, or if you want it to be tuned to the news to wake you up or that kind of thing. Um, then the picture next to the little one in the sleep sack is the sleep bar. And that's handy because um, you can put it under your pillow or next to your pillow, whatever works best for you and play your podcast or your music or your white noise or your green noise. And um, the idea is that you will be able to hear it, but not anyone who might be in the room or the bed with you. Um, and then next to that, we have a Bluetooth uh, sleep mask, which covers your eyes. So you don't get input from light or affected by light that way. You can also play um, white noise or podcasts or music or whatever through that if that helps you sleep. And then at the very top, we just have a sound machine with some lights. And then um, next to that, we have the Better Sleep app logo because there are all different kinds of apps to help with sleeping. So that's just one that we came up with. And also um, compression sheets can be helpful. They're a tighter sheet that gives off deep pressure and can help settle if somebody needs that at night. And then AT for executive functioning. Um, so we have things like the Alexa devices. I can say that because I don't have one in this office. Um, you do have to be careful that you don't accidentally set them off though, but you can set them to, um, give you reminders to take a break or do a breathing technique or take a walk or use the restroom or drink water or whatever you would want to do. Um, again, we have reminder watches for that also, um, that can be helpful. And then also just the reminders that you can set on your phone and things that other things that you can do on your phone, like set up schedules and timers and uh, checklists. Because for some folks, they have a more difficult time focusing if they have a lot of things on their plate. So if you can put things on a checklist that you can check off, A, it's fun to check things off. B, you know, you haven't missed anything. Um, and those are also good for, um, like audiobooks and meditation that you can use on your phone or your Alexa. Um, so there's those. And then AT for mental health. So I like to think that any of the things that we have mentioned so far can be beneficial for mental health um, because anything that makes life easier for folks and generally more enjoyable um, I think is always helpful for your mental health, but there are several apps that we have access to that can help. Um, if you're looking for that, uh, related to mindfulness and breathing, um, and focus. So we just have a couple of examples. Everybody, I feel like is pretty familiar with the Calm app. Um, another app that is available and is free for folks is PTSD coach. So if somebody experiences uh, PTSD, and even if they don't, it's a good app to use to sort of check in because it will ask you how you're feeling today and you answer a couple of questions and it will give you coping techniques to use throughout the day to help improve your day and improve your mental health. And it will also track, if you use it multiple times, it will sort of track patterns and give you um, more tailored suggestions based on those things. Um, and then I'll talk about the sensate and then I'll let Caitlin talk about Finch cause she loves Finch. Um, <laughs> the thing that we have on the bottom right corner is called the sensate. And that is a device. It's a little medallion that comes on a lanyard and you pair it with an app on your phone and you can pick a music pattern or in a vibration pattern and you wear the sensate uh, you place it on your sternum. And the idea is the vibrations and the music will stimulate your vagus nerve and help with anxiety, um, particularly if you're someone who 
experiences a lot of anxiety or maybe isn't as comfortable with um, medical options, um, prescription options, um, this is available. And I've heard that folks really, really enjoy it. That's one of our really popular items. So, The last image on this slide shows the three little verbs in the, for the Finch app. And uh, Finch app is like gamifying self-care. Um, so there's lots of check-ins and um, first aid um, sort of tools uh, that you can access and teach you how to use. So different breathing techniques. So for example, you can set um, the amount of time you want to do the breathing. And if you want to do it to relax and get calm, or if you need to do focus breathing or energizing breathing. Um, so they kind of have the different techniques available in there. You can also pair it with um, exercises and set goals for yourself uh, that have a customized schedule for things you do every day or maybe every other day or once a week or once a month or whatever your schedule is for that. And as you check things off the list, you earn uh, energy and um, sort of coins for your little verb. And then you can go to the store and buy different outfits and different things for their little treehouse room. Um, and it is a very um, satisfying click to check those items off. Your phone kind of gives a little vibration and the coins kind of go up to the bank and um, it offers lots of really um, cool graphs and things to track um, how you're keeping up on different goals and things um, and is a really lovely and customizable option for folks. Another benefit to it too, I think, is you can invite your friends to play with you. Um, so you can kind of have your friends as a built-in backup check-in system. Um, and it's just a way, it's a nice way to engage with your friends too. Because mm -hmm. everybody has to keep their little finches alive. So it's kind of like an old school Tamagotchi mm -hmm. a little bit. <laughs> This slide has a lot of um, AT for um, different types of access. It has um, images of a number of the switches that are available in our lending library, but not all, would you believe it? How lucky are we to have all these wonderful options? Um, when considering access um, for AT for um, sensory needs or self-regulation or learning opportunities, um, it's also important to consider um, what type of switch you're using, um, not only for the person's uh, motoric and positioning needs, but also for the um, texture inputs as well. Um, so we have um, a few different um, size switch options um, and input options. I'm not going to go over every single one on this slide. If you have questions, I would love to answer that. But for the sake of time, I'll try to be brief and just talk about how we have some that are the traditional click down. Some are proximity, so you kind of have to hover above or near or on. We have pinch switches. Um, we also have grip switches. Um, we have some switches that are covered in uh, like a pillow switch, so it's softer material. We also have um, some that are um, water resistant as well. This next slide talks about um, kind of a widely available um, option for folks, which is different sort of calming videos. Um, there's all kinds of YouTube playlists out there with different videos for different purposes. Um, I just listed some of um, my favorites on there. Um, ASMR or the Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response is sort of that like tingly, goosebumpy, satisfactory feeling some folks experience when they get certain inputs. Um, there's a lot of videos out there that are um, great for that and can be very calming. Um, in particular, some of the different slime videos. Wow, are there some amazing slime creators out there? and they do different interactions with them and scooping and um, all kinds of neat things. Um, folks are doing cool things with sand art um, and kinetic sand, putting it into different shapes and cutting it. Um, there is um, someone named Andrea Love who does a kind of a cooking with felt show, which is like little tiny um, felted kitchen miniatures. And it's like motion stop animated and um, is very um, visually interesting and kind of has like calming or sweet music a lot of the time as well. There's tons of things out there. If you want more ideas for those, please feel free to reach out. Any questions at this time? I'm looking at the clock. It's 109. We've got about 21 minutes left, promise to you. And now we're talking about learning and education. 
um, for this last bit here. Feel free to interject as you have questions um, or type them in the chat. Um, otherwise, we're gonna um, we're just gonna keep trugging along so we can try to try to get through all of this. Okay. Um, next section here is talking about AT for learning. And so similar to as Laura mentioned earlier, you know, we sort of categorize things a little bit, but keep in mind many pieces of AT work, you know, multi-purpose and cross-categorically and can be used in lots and lots of different ways. Also, pretty much every piece of AT we've already talked about can be used in a learning setting as well. So um, keep that in mind. Um, AT, just a brief note about AT and the IEP and 504 plans. Um, both IEPs are individualized education plans and 504 plans um, can include AT. Um, IEPs are a little more um, in depth in terms of um, they list out specialized instruction related services um, that a student needs to access their education and 504 plans focus more on uh, the accommodations that will be provided. Um, but um, Regardless, IEP teams are required to consider the need for AT, and if AT is necessary, um, schools, districts are required to, um, to get that item available for that student. And if you're curious about um, some recent guidance that came out this year on that from the Department of Education, um, there is a link in the chat for you. AT in the classroom. Uh, many of the different um, fidgets and um, other items we talked about today are, can be great options to include in a calming corner or an action corner or in a student's customized self-regulation toolbox. Um, calming quarters are kind of set up to do um, you know, the calming activity. So things are gonna help um, feel more regulated and ready to learn um, different um, soft, squishy, comfy things, those types of inputs. Action corners are a little bit um, kind of opposite sort of input from that um, can kind of outline um, different like gross motor movements um, for students to do could be like tape on the wall and things to jump and tap or little um, obstacle courses in the hallway or different types of movements and things like that. Self-regulation toolboxes can be um, done with visual supports and, or can be actual physical boxes of items um, and fidgets that are tools that are helpful for a student to use. Um, we have in the next few slides here talking about AT for learning and development, including social emotional learning, some seating options, AT for reading and writing and note taking, drawing, writing, crafting, art, um, different um, switch mounts and styluses and grips and um, computer access and stuff for recess as well. There also, there's a lot of AT out there for classroom atmosphere, like light covers and things like that to um, create a good learning environment space um, for folks so they can do their best learning as well. Okay. So AT for learning coping skills. We have one of the really, I think really neat things that we have is the Mightier app. And what the Mightier app is, is it comes already on an iPad and it is a game that comes with heart monitor that you wear like a Fitbit and then a stress ball. And um, the idea of the Mightier game is designed to annoy you because it will monitor your heart rate. And then if your heart rate goes up too high, it will require that you use coping skills to move along in the game. So um, like the first game that you're playing, the first coping skill might be to squeeze the stress ball until your heart rate comes back down and you're allowed to move forward. As you progress, it might be do 10 jumping jacks, uh, you know, that kind of thing, it just depends. And there are, um, 25 different games on the Mightier app. So if one game doesn't work, there are plenty of others, but a lot of the, the first one I know has to deal with collecting little lava guys. So that's kind of fun. Um, so that's the Mightier app. And the idea is that the more that you utilize that game, those skills will become transferable outside of the game to other situations also. Um, so we have a picture of the Mightier app and somebody um, utilizing the Mightier app below that. And then um, right next to that, we have um, some little spot of emotion people. So they are little stuffies that 
um, illustrate different emotions, kind of like the inside out uh, cartoons, but it also comes with a book that will help um, particularly folks who are learning about what emotions are, because sometimes it's hard to put a name to those things, um, might help explain what anger feels like or sadness feels like and can look like for some folks so that people are better able to identify. So that's um, those. And then next to that, we have Harmony Game Room, that which is also a free app and has a variety of games that are designed to um, help with different coping skills like breathing or even, you know, how to talk to a friend and build those social skills. Um, it'll give you sample questions um, to start conversations and talk about uh, facial expressions and social cues and that kind of thing in a very um, fun game-like way. So. And then we have all different kinds of sensory seating. So um, in the right top corner, here's a butterfly seat. And the butterfly seat is neat because one side is smooth and one side has sort of the little nubs. And so you can turn it over based on whatever input you need. You can also adjust the level of air. So it can be firmer or squishier depending on somebody's needs. Um, underneath that, we have wiggle wobble chair feet, which are great if you or somebody are someone that needs to fidget a little bit and be moving in order to concentrate. You can do that safely. Um, and then right next to that, we have the bouncy bands, which is pretty much the same idea as the wiggle wobble chair feet, but you can use them while you're sitting at a desk. So you can be working on whatever it is you're working on and sort of have the band going across. And so you can um, tap your leg and tap your feet and jostle that way. And then we have all different kinds of seating um, that wobbles and is different heights. And some of it you can use standing and some of it has handles on it and can rock. And we have some that spins um, if that helps you to concentrate and regulate a little bit more. So there's all different kinds of seating options for the classroom there. Um, then we have different kinds of supportive seating. So the firefly seat, which is the blue one up here, um, is a seat that you can attach to standard chairs at homes, restaurants, classrooms, whatever. Um, and it has different um, positions. So you can sit in whatever position is comfortable and useful. And there are also different kinds of headrests depending on the level of supports that are needed for that. And they can grow and adjust with the user's changes in growth. Um, AT for reading. I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly just for the sake of time. But again, if anybody has any questions, certainly feel free to reach out. Um, there are many different kinds of reading pens. So there's a C pen, which is um, you can highlight text and it will read it to you. It also has a dictionary function. So if there's a word that you don't understand, you can go back over it and ask the uh, dictionary to define it. You can also change languages um, if somebody has a need for that. Um, there's the leapfrog reader, which is more for emergent readers. And again, we'll read text to you as you're moving it across the page. There's the OrCam, which is the device that's attached to the set of glasses up here in the right corner. And that, this one particularly is called the OrCam My Eye. And it will, um, once you turn it on, you can look in the direction of something. So if you want to read the paper, for example, you can say, hey, OrCam, read me the headlines. And it will read you all the headlines. Or you can say, read me page seven, and it will read you everything on page seven that it can see. Um, it can also um, tell you what time it is. Just if you gesture by turning your wrist, it will know that that means that you wanna know what time it is. So that will tell you that. Um, we have the OrCam Read, which is very similar, but is a handheld device rather than being on a set of glasses. 
And what that is, is you put it above the text that you want to have read to you. And anything that's in the laser box, once you push the button all the way down, it sort of takes a picture. It even makes the uh, um, old shutter sound so that you know that the picture is being processed. And then whatever is in that laser box, it will read to you. And it is pretty accurate. I did it with the back of my car insurance just to see, and it didn't miss a thing. So um, that's the OrCam Read. And then the OrCam Learn is also very similar. The only difference is with that is it will track um, reading fluency if a student is um, needing supports there. Um, and it will also ask comprehension questions. So you can say, hey, OrCam, ask me, and it will ask you comprehension questions about the text that you just read to make sure that you're getting the information that you need out of that. Um, we also have things that are uh, much quote unquote lower tech. Um, for example, the visual reading guide, the sort of uh, red and yellow striped thing in the bottom corner here um, can help if folks need contrast to be able to see things. And it can also help um, in terms of eye tracking to help folks remain focused on where they need to be. Um, and then just things like audiobooks um, are also helpful too. And so we have um, the logo to Libby, which is an audiobook program that you can access through your library. But there are several others too. That's just the example of the one that we have. And then um, for more AT for reading, just some really, really basic things to consider. Um, just using more readable fonts and font sizes and font spacing, um, contrasting colors for like flyers and things. Uh, sometimes even I will have a difficult time if the colors are too similar. So you wanna make sure that you're being mindful of that. Um, again, things like reading guides, there's overlays for pages and even stuff as simple as a sticky note um, to sort of help you uh, keep track of where you need to be. And again, use it as sort of a tracking because it's a nice straight edge there. So we have um, the pictures of the sticky notes there and then um, just picture of an accessibility screen for an iPhone that will go over some of the accessibility features there. Um, and then just different uh, software and programs and apps for reading. So there's the immersive reader, which is a tool to help with reading and comprehension. Um, it, you can improve your focus on the text by changing font and style and text and background and color and all of those things. Um, it can also read text aloud to you. Voice Dream Reader is a text to speech app that uses AI to read documents aloud, including emails, web pages, that kind of stuff. Um, you can get that on iOS and it can also be used without internet connection, which is a handy tool. Um, Bard is the Braille and audio reading download program which is sponsored by the National Library Service for Blind and Print Disabled folks. Um, you do have to fill out an application to um, state that you need that support, but you can download books and magazines and journal articles and those kind of things through that. And then um, Seeing AI app is an app that uses artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, sorry, to identify money, people, things in your cupboard, that kind of thing. Um, it's also free and is available for iPhones and Android devices. And then AT for note taking, we have the LiveScribe pens. Um, the LiveScribe pens are really cool. As long as you're using the LiveScribe paper, it does require the LiveScribe paper. It can, um, while you're taking notes, it will also record the audio that's um, that someone is saying while you're taking the notes. So even if you're a doodler, if you're doodling a flower, but you don't remember what somebody was saying while you were busy doodling your flower, you can go back and touch the flower and it will um, play the recording back for you. So you won't miss anything there. Um, and those do come with headphones. 
also. So you don't have to worry about when the text is being read back to you that you're disrupting anyone else. Um, and then there's all different kinds of AT for writing and drawing. There's a variety of pencil grips on the slide. Some of them are a little bit squishier. Um, some of them are a little bit more stable. There's the writing bird, the thing that kind of looks like a dove. Um, and the idea of that is you put the pencil or the pen or whatever marker you want in there um, and you can tighten it and then you just sort of glide the bird along. So you don't have to be able to grip the pen at all, um, which is handy. And then above that is the Arth Writer. I always tell people it kind of looks like the Death Star from Star Wars, but <laughs> you can... Um, tighten your pen or your pencil or your paintbrush in there also. So if you need um, to grip your pen or your pencil or whatever in a different way, you can do that. Um, next to that, the kind of rocket ship looking thing with somebody's finger in it is the pen again. And the idea behind that is you, you stick your finger in sort of that horseshoe shape, and then you don't have to worry about gripping anything at all. Um, and you can still write. And then underneath that, is an egg crayon. So if you have somebody who needs an atypical grip for a crayon, maybe a wider grip um, or a grip that requires less strength, they can use the egg crayon and still be able to create art. Sorry, I was looking at the question in the chat there. Um, Carlos was asking, uh, or said that access to these products with associated costs, our Parks and Recreation Daycare Program is interested in purchasing several products featured. So I would say, Carlos, please, please email us and we can talk to you about where to get these things from. Um, this slide has a lot of images of different um, stylus and grip options. So in addition to the grips Erin was just um, chatting about on the writing page, um, there are a few different grips that can be used universally on pens, pencils, and also styluses. So if you need a stylus to access a touch screen, um, there are a few different options for you. We have options that can wrap around your hand or your wrist with different um, types of attachments. We have uh, styluses that can attach to your head. We also have a number of different grips available, and uh, we have one stylus in particular particular, which is this image in the um, left side page, left side of the page in the middle, which is the Cosmonaut. It's a um, like dry erase marker sized um, stylus. So it's a little bit thicker, thicker and heavier, which can be nice input for folks who need something a little bit more substantial to access a touchscreen. On the next page, we also have um, a number of images on um, related to AT for um, crafting. And um, we have different um, scissors. This first image shows a picture of suction cup scissors that suction cup to the table that you can cut with and kind of guide the paper through. Um, we also have a number of um, uh, paint brushes with adapted grips on them um, and other um, AT. I'm gonna I would love to talk more about the items on this page, but I'm looking at the time and I, I wanna make sure we have time for any questions. Um, can we go to the next slide, Erin? We also have AT for classroom gaming. So um, dice towers and rollers, accessible dice, card holders. We have the alternate spinner, which um, is a switch adapted um, alternative to dice. And you can also customize that in other ways. Um, and on the slide after that, we have um, AT for computer access. So we have lots of different type of mice and keyboards and key guards available for folks to try to find a good setup at a computer. The slide after that has um, a number of our different mounts that are available for um, tablets, phones, switches and other items so you can get um, access to all of those things in the position that works best for you. And the final slide um, with AT on it shows some of our AT for recess or recreation or play at school. So we have uh, the walkie chalkies that we talked about earlier, um, some um, adapted chalk rollers that can be attached to wheelchairs. We have a snowball maker 
and um, we have some of the um, Velcro ball catch toys. So the takeaway for today is that there's a wide variety of AT available to support sensory and learning needs across environments. And there's a lot of things that can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, AT can and should be a part of accommodations available for folks in educational settings. Consistent, consistent access to and use of AT is practicing disability pride. And really and truly AT provides access and opens up possibilities for people. What questions do you have? There's a question in the chat from Sarah that says, does MDRC offer classes or support groups for children with learning disabilities and dyslexia and ways to help them outside of school? Great question. We don't currently have a group set up specifically to help um, families with kiddos with learning disabilities and dyslexia, but Erin is our youth specialist and she might know of some community resources depending on where you're located. Erin, do you have anything to add to that? I would just say certainly feel free to reach out and I will do my best to get you hooked up with some uh, current resources and then certainly check back because we're always adding things to sort of our repertoire. So just because we don't have something now doesn't mean that we won't in the future. So certainly keep in touch with us and we'll keep you up to date. Um, there was also a question from Kelly about talking about SLD read. Mm -hmm. What specifically SLD. about it? Um, let me see. There's also um, a message um, from Marsha that says, thank you, I learned so much that I'll share with others and maybe someone, and maybe use myself someday. I appreciated that information shared went beyond just reading the slide. Yeah, I apologize for us pushing so close to the end of our time. As you can tell, probably Aaron, Laura, and I love talking about assistive technology and all of the many ways it can be used, especially the creative and off-label uses. So we love to brainstorm those ideas with folks. So um, please feel free to reach out to us um, through our email or phone number, um, which will be on one of our slides here um, for more of a customized conversation. Um, we'll also send out our resource guide with some of the resources we talked about today as well. Kelly was just wondering if we could mention SLD as a resource, a possible resource for others. Mm -hmm. For sure. So yeah. I will put the I'll put the link to SLD in the um in the chat for everyone. Yep. And that'll for sure go in our resource guide too that should be forthcoming. So one thing that's cool about our work um, too is even if you you know have a question and it may not be something that we have or do, um, we have a lot of connections with folks in programs and grant programs and waiver programs and things like that. And we love to help folks get connected with resources in their community. Erin, will you switch it to our um, contact slide? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions, anyone? Well, there is a question from Marsha. It says, have you thought about sending this presentation to school administration for sharing with staff? They could, there's so much they could use here. Funny you mentioned that, Marsha. You know, Aaron and I take this show on the road. <laughs> <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah. we love to come and provide in-person trainings in schools we also can do them uh, virtually Erin what else do you want to say about that I was just gonna say um we can we don't typically share our presentations just because we like to sort of tailor them to the needs of the audiences that we're working with but if you know of anybody or want to put us in contact with anybody that you think could benefit um, we're certainly happy to do that. Yep, Aaron and I come to schools regularly um, to provide 
trainings and presentations for uh, leadership teams, assistive technology teams, um, and all sorts of educational staff who have, want to learn more about um, what AT is available and can be beneficial for their students. Um, we also love to be invited to community events like open houses and um, resource nights and things like that so we can share about our program. See anything else in the chat, so. Wonderful. Thank you everyone for your time today. Um, we're so glad that you're here and wanted to learn more about assistive technology. Please feel free to contact us at the information listed on the slide, and we hope to hear from you all soon.